I've done some more work in the palm fronds, so now we're going to move down to the green leaves and do some work oh, in the water and on the boat. So let's start by removing the masking fluid. You can just use your finger and rub it away, this small amount. And then you're going to see these stark white highlights in the palm tree and in the ocean. You have to get that masking fluid off as soon as possible so that you can start blending it in. So now the only masking fluid I have left is protecting this metal on the boat. So to blend that in, I'm going to use an angled shader brush, get it damp, and then just lightly rub against the edges wherever I have taken off the masking fluid. I'll do that first, and then after it's blended in a little bit, you can paint the lighter color. and it should show up nice and cleanly. So you preserve that white paper. So just follow those steps. And if you need to, you can get a paper towel or a Kleenex and after rubbing, just blot the area. To lighten the tone up even more. In the water, I'm going to go in with a darker blue and accent around the waves. So on the underside of these waves here, there's a little bit of darker blue. I see a dark blue wave in the back. And over it like this. So I'm just using that dark blue to add an interesting contrasting line around those highlights to help it look like the water is rushing in and changing color as it froths up and has some uh, low lights and highlights. remember you want to preserve the smallest details and the darkest contrasts for the foreground. So if your lines get too sharp in the background, blot them to soften them up and then bring them closer to the foreground. Can add uh, some more details that way off camera to save some time now that you've seen how that goes. And then at this shoreline here, I'm going to do the same thing and just add a light line of some darks to help highlight how the waves are coming into the shore. So adding water is really just a matter of um, taking some time doing some color matching to get the blues correct and then just adding some really interesting shapes but it doesn't have to take a lot of work already this has come a long ways so let's go forward to the leaves just mix up I have a bottle green because these greens are really vivid and then I'm going to cut it with a yellow color match it's pretty good. And then I'll just go through pretty great deliberance and paint the shapes of these individual leaves. 
because they're a rubber tree plant, so the leaves are really broad and you can see a lot of detail here. But you still want there to be color variation. So I'm going to paint some of these lighter ones in the foreground and then add a little bit more yellow and paint some of these yellower leaves that are hanging around in the background. Peeking under and then just do the same thing but with a darker green. So to darken the green you can just add some blue like Antwerp blue or Prussian blue and then you'll still get that bottle green color but the color will be a lot darker. Then once those lighter colors dry you can add a little bit of detail like the line on the center of the leaf and shadows around the leaf. You can do that with that darker green. So adding the leaves is really just a matter of taking some time and filling in the details. So this is what I'm going to do and I'll finish that off camera as well. Just filling in the leaves like that. Then Let's do some work in the boat. Color matching the boat is really important. So I want it to stand out from the water just like it does in the um, reference. And it's a little bit tricky because you have an object that has some small detail parts as well as an area where you're going to need a broader stroke. So I'm going to start by outlining around those small details. And if your hand isn't steady enough to do this, go ahead and tape the edge. And that'll give you a really precise line. But I'm painting here with the lighter color going up to the edge of that white part of the boat, working around this highlight. And then I'm going to switch brushes, go to a flat, and that flat will allow me to fill in more quickly. Just use plenty of paint. You don't want to have to keep redoing it over and over again. And remember that your paint is going to lighten up. And I'm going to let the blue dry and do the same thing for the red. Just color match and then fill in that shape. And then after the blue is dried, I'm going to add that shadow shape on top. But I'll show you how to do that once that blue is dried. So I'm going to go off screen now. I'm going to finish work in the palm tree and add these leaves, add the red, and then I'll come back to you and show you how to do the shading in the white part of the boat and we'll start working on the sand. Now that I've added the base tones to the boat and done some work in the leaves, I can work on the sand because if you move forward in the picture plane, so sand comes next. The sand is going to be a little bit tricky. So what you should do is just look at your reference material and try to become familiar with the general shape of the divot patterns 
of the dark parts on the sand. We're going to do this mid-tone first and then the shadow shapes that go over the top of everything last. So we want to mix up first of all this darker sand color. So mix something up. Gonna get a little bit more brown in my sand there. And then I'm going to keep the reference material close and start adding those shadows. So these are the, the divots, the darker divots. They're sort of half moon shapes. Looks like where someone was walking on the sand. It may get larger as you come closer to the foreground. And then we have some that are smaller. Some that are a little bit more crumbly. So you can just take your time and fill in those shapes, paying close attention to what you see on the page. While some of those are still wet, I can go back and add some darker tone and then I can use the brush on the side to get a more irregular pattern that will look more natural. There are fewer footsteps on this side, but there's still some of that irregular stuff, so I can put that in. And I can do that in a little bit more off camera too. Let's go ahead and add some detail to the center of the boat as well. So I'm going to look for that really washed out blue shadow shape or shadow color. It goes over everything. So I can just put that down really quickly. Just going to avoid the highlights. Let that dry and then add the shadows over the top of that. And then in the boat itself I'm going to move to a round brush and work on the shadow, that shadow line right here. Try to put it down smoothly. And then in the red part, there's more shadow right here. Oop. I got a little bit too dark, so I'm going to go back over the top with the color a little bit washed out and soften it up.
Okie dokie. I see a shadow in the background right here on the sand, so I'll put that in because that sand is dry. That can be done easily. And now we have to wait for the rest of the sand to dry so we can add the shadow shapes here. I'll just add some paint to these wooden planks that the boat is sitting on. And then when I come back, we'll be ready to finalize the shadows on the boat and on the sand and be done. Okay, we're getting closer here. So let me focus in on the boat. And we're going to add some details in the interior. There's a really, really dark shadow right back here and then we have a medium shadow to the side of the boat and some light ones on the very tops of the seats. So let's start with a really dark black. I'm just going to use a pure Payne's Gray and I'm going to tape my lines because that is such a really dark distinct shadow I want it to be precise. Tape them off there. Right there. So then just really tamp down hard with your fingernail. And then once it's taped, you can just paint right over the top. Just like that. Mm hmm. Touch over the top again if this color starts to sink into the paper and that will keep it really really dark. Then I have to wait for that to dry completely and we can continue on with our shadow work. Okie dokie. This is dry so cross your fingers so we got a nice clean line. Ooh, looking good. Awesome. Got some dry pigment there I can just blow to get rid of that. And now we can put in those lighter blues on top of the um, little benches. So I'm going to do some careful color matching here to get those shadow colors right. Okay. And I think I'm going to retape the top line right here. So after painting that little shadow, you can remove your tape and then you have your nice straight upper line. And I'll do the same here for this lower line. So you can see how you can just quickly use the tape to aid in making those lines really, really straight. And that's a technique you can use for lots of different times. So it's a handy thing to keep in mind. Okay, 
I've got this line. That's not quite right because it should be closer to here. Okay. Then you have some darker shadows that are cast on the boat on the side. So you can take your time and protect those the same way. This will keep them nice and straight and they're a little bit darker. So just color match, make sure that you're getting the color right. I'll put that down and then I'll let that dry. And in the meantime, I'm also going to mix up the shadow that goes over the sand cast by the boat. So that's going to be a lot darker, but I want it to be a little bit um, transparent too. So. You need to make a wash that is dark, but is also going to layer without covering all of the sand that you already put down. So it's gonna be a little hard, and I recommend doing some practice painting on one of your scrap pieces to see how well your color that you mixed up is going to do as far as laying transparently. So once you have it though, I'm painting this shadow right here, and you can see that it's a really clear rectangle, and then it goes into that underbrush so it goes over here then up and just make sure that you move your paper as needed so that you have the most control possible and that shadow needs to touch the boat. Okay, that's looking pretty good now, but I'm going to let it dry and then um, see where it, it lies after drying. And in the meantime, I'm going to use that same color that I mixed up to lay the shadow over these wood planks and into the sand on this side. Okay, touch up there, remove your tape, and then the shadow bends a little bit at the uh, 
outer edge of the boat here. Very good. So I'm going to go off one more time and do some fiddly work in the water. Just maybe adding a few more darks here and there. And some things I can just add with my large brush by brushing over the top like this. I need to soften some of these edges and bring out some more darks and probably nothing is even going to cause much of a change in the picture just for my own satisfaction. So then I'm going to show you the final piece and it's going to be really, really close to what we've got here. But let me go off, give it some more time, um, maybe about 20 minutes painting time on my own and I'll come back and show you the finished piece. All right, I've added just a few little finishing touches. Here's the reference material and here's what I've wound up with. So I feel like I, I'm at a good place to stop now. You probably can't even see what I did. Just a few little things in the water here, cleaning up the shadows around the boat, uh, making the shadow just a touch darker, things like that. And after you are satisfied, you can take off your tape. And that will show you what it would look like with a white mat. So the blank white edges really help to show you flaws in the composition and um, if the colors are popping out, everything should be cleaned up a little bit by these really straight edges. So I'm satisfied with this and I hope that you've been enjoying the tutorial and learning along with me as we did some back to front seascape painting here. I hope that you learned some things that you can take with you to your own studio and I thank you so much for watching.